Welcome to Art 101. Art, 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 Art 101 with Mr. Burger. Hey friends, welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and educator with a master's degree in art education, coming to you to give you the best information possible about art history. Time it is for you to look past a pile of old books. And remember, the content of this video is intended for individuals 13 years of age or older. <laughs> you watch your language. Now, I don't know if it's just me with the new Star Wars coming out and all the hype around it, but there's really a lot of connections between the Impressionists and Star Wars. We would be honored if you would join us. Yeah, I know. I color for a living, but this actually kind of makes sense. I know. In the world of Star Wars, the opportunist entrepreneurs were really the Jawas, the little brown creatures that roamed around in their bands stealing people's droids and reselling them, not completely unlike the art collectors and the art dealers of the Impressionist time period. There's one in particular that went out of his way to really assist the Impressionist people in getting known and recognized. Paul Durand Rule was a French art dealer that was very much associated with the Impressionist movement. Like many Parisians during the Franco-Prussian War, he would escape his homeland for London, where he would meet a number of Impressionist painters, including Claude Monet and Camilla Pizarro. So powerful and so wise. He would become a major proponent of the work they were creating, setting up exhibitions of their work, first in England and then in France once he would return. He would also become a major exporter of their work to the United States, working with Impressionist artists such as Monet, Morissat, Pizarro, Renoir, and Sisley. At a time when European collectors could care less about Impressionism, he would say that American public does not laugh, it buys. Oh, Jar Jar, everyone hates you but me. <laughs> A lot of the Star Wars saga really hinges on Luke Skywalker. Our Luke Skywalker is Claude Monet. It is safe to say that Claude Monet would revolutionize the way that art is made and looked at. He is focused on light, nature, and brushwork in every single one of his paintings. Early in his career, he was being confused with a very famous artist by the name of Edouard Manet who sought him out and accused him of changing his name so that they would be purposefully confused with one another. What do you see? Clearly this wasn't the case and they actually became very close friends. Although Manet would be very influential in the work of Monet, Manet was never an impressionist or really associated with it other than as a supporter. We are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. He was looking at things in such a unique way, even converting a boat into a floating studio. In April of 1874, an exhibition had opened up in Paris that featured the work of Monet, along with Paul Cezanne, Edgar Degas, Camilla Pizarro, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Frederick Sicily, and a few others. Like many during the Franco-Prussian War, Monet was creating his paintings in England. And one that was included in the show was a work called Impression Sunrise. This particular work would catch the eye of a menacing character. You have failed me for the last time. Even the Impressionists had a Darth Vader, an individual that was just naysayer, that really disliked everything about them and wanted to kill them at their core. But in this case, it was a writer. Louis Leroy had spotted the Monet painting Impression Sunrise. He himself was a landscape painter and critic for a Parisian newspaper. He said that Impression Sunrise was the most fitting title. It is not a sunrise, it is an impression of one. Just like Monet is not a painter, he is doing an impression of one. He would literally write, It is unheard of dreadful. It's going to make me have a stroke. 
wallpaper in its embryonic state is more labored than this seascape. Louis Leroy would first use impression as an insult toward this artist and their collective showing. Monet and his friends would take that criticism and make it into a crown jewel. This title would propel Monet to become the unofficial leader of the Impressionists, a collective group of workers that would think and work alike, supporting one another as creators and innovators. Although a very famous movement, this was only an active group from 1874 until 1886, the first of which was held at the studio of famed photographer Felix Nader. But originally they were not called the Impressionists. They were showing under the name of the Anonymous Society of Painters, Sculptors, Engravers, etc. The rebellion is spreading, and I want to be on the side I believe in. This first exhibition featured 165 of their artworks. The concept was simple. They wanted to showcase their work without payment, without a jury, and without awards. That's it. Renoir was right by the side of Monet throughout all of this. He is Claude Monet's C-3PO. Pierre-Auguste Renoir began his art career in a porcelain factory painting designs onto plates, always with the dream of getting better and better and pursuing his own career. And he would become great friends with Claude Monet, who he was a very close impressionistic companion with, as well as fellow artist Basile. Basile, Monet, and Renoir would oftentimes work outside, one of the key elements of the work of the impressionist painter. They would learn to become faithful to their first impression. During the Franco-Prussian War, Renoir was called up for military service, where he was working at training the cavalry horses. However, his friend Frederick Bazile was killed during the Franco-Prussian War. He would take part in the Impressionist exhibitions in 1874, 1876, and 1877, and then he would begin to show in the official salons starting in 1879. The chosen one! Yoda was the master that all others would go to for guidance and information. In the world of the Impressionists, that individual was Camilla Pizarro. When we think of Impressionism, we think of many names. However, landscape painter Camilla Pizarro should be the cream of the crop. He was their Yoda. He was the go-to person for questions and answers. As stated, during the Franco-Prussian War, he would evacuate France for London, where he would remain for some two years. Upon arriving back home, he had to rebuild his entire studio. His house was nearly destroyed by the Parisian army, and over 1,400 paintings in his personal collection were destroyed. Pizarro helped with the initial organization in this small society of independent artists that was working outside the mainstream of the salon. In the original 1874 show, Pizarro had five landscapes. Okay, now, whatever you do, don't stare. At what? what? Any of it. And he was the only artist to participate in all eight of the official Impressionist shows. He was the enduring figure from the beginning to the end. And even when he couldn't sell his work and was living near poverty, he would refuse to ever sell in the salon again. The greatest teacher failure is... The Princess Leia of Impressionism, without a doubt, is Mary Cassatt. Without question, Mary Cassatt was a very tough-minded individual for her time. She was born in Pennsylvania in a very wealthy family. She had a little brother that was very sick, so the family moved to Paris, where it was a better situation for her family. In 1855, her sick little brother passed away. You know, it's not easy having a sibling. Interesting side note, anytime I see Jabba the Hutt, I'm reminded of my sister. But uh, I digress. She and the family would move back to Pennsylvania, however, it was not long until she found her way back to France, where she would study and work. You catch on pretty quick. 
she would return home during the outbreak of the Franco-Prussian War. But American galleries wanted no part of a female in their galleries and studio spaces. It was not long until she was admitted into the salon and was getting more and more popular when she met fellow artist Edgar Degas. Now, Edgar Degas was not an Impressionist, but he did show with them, so it can be a little confusing. Through his guidance, she would decide to join the group that were then calling themselves the Independents. We're home. She would show her work with the Impressionists four times. Now, this was a perfect situation for her because she could show without being rejected simply for being a female. Degas, Renoir, Manet, and Pizarro would all be very influential. Take it away! Han Solo was kind of a unique character in that he was a likable person, but also kind of this rough character that really did some unsavory things. An individual that was very similar to that, although slightly different in stature, was Henry Toulouse-Lautrec. Henri Toulouse-Lautrec was a master of design. He also excelled at illustration, painting, and was perhaps the greatest poster maker of all time. Toulouse-Lautrec was born with a calcium deficiency that caused his bones to become very brittle. At the age of 14, he was the size of a six-year-old, reaching the height of four foot six. Because of his fragile nature, he spent a lot of time drawing and painting. And although he was a very proficient artist, he lived with the ridicule by his father because of his dwarf-like appearance. He would meet and work with many of the artists known as the Impressionists, and, quite friendly, with many of the post-Impressionists as well. Toulouse-Lautrec was good friends with the unknown Vincent van Gogh, as well as Edgar Degas, Oscar Wilde, and James McNeil Whistler. Sadly, because of his life situation, he would often resort to destructive means of self-medication. By 1898, he was rarely sober. Alcoholic and syphilis-induced hallucinations and paranoia consumed his life. Although he only lived to the age of 36, his influence would be very, very great. After creating some 1,000 paintings, 5,000 drawings, and 350 prints and posters. It's all right. Nobody's perfect. Rodin was a sculptor and very different from all of the others. He looked different, he worked a little different, he created different, and therefore, he is our Chewbacca. Although color is not a factor in his work, Rodin is very much considered an Impressionist sculptor. His interest in the effects of light on his sculpted surfaces and the experimental nature of his work is very much a three-dimensional extension of Impressionism. Within his work, he is straddling realistic and symbolic ideas. The imperfect surface of the work provides a clear break from realistic representation. Do or do not. There is no try. Hey, thanks for the watch, and make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more episodes of Art 101 with me, Mr. Burger. <laughs>